Cooking with Amy during NDVS SB's Virtual Family Weekend 2021. Part 1 Making Mashed Potatoes. I'm Amy Oswald, Vision Rehabilitation Specialist with North Dakota Vision Services School for the Blind. Today we are going to do a cooking video for students and parents to do together at home for our Virtual Family Weekend 2021. Today we're going to be initially making mashed potatoes and this is a request from Edward. The items we will need for this lesson are a paring knife, a cutting board, half a stick of butter, and half of a package of cream cheese. You want to bring out your cream cheese and your butter before you start anything because then that will give it time to get to room temperature. We will also need a potato masher. I'm using the Pampered Chef Mix and Chop. You can also use a hand mixer. I typically do not do that um, simply because I think when you use a hand mixer, it tends to mix them too much and then you end up with kind of a potato paste. Um, I also have a cutting glove. This is a glove that will prevent you from cutting your hand that is holding the potato. This is one that I purchased off Amazon. We have five pounds of potatoes and a pot to boil them in. Um, this pot is a combination of boiling pot and a colander, so the colander sits right inside. This is a great option for people who are just first learning how to cook simply because you don't have to pour the potatoes, the pasta, um, whatever you're cooking into a colander in the sink. You can just lift it right out. These potatoes that I have are very small. Um, the red potatoes. So um, I'm not going to peel them. When you do not peel them, you preserve more of the potassium in the potato. Amy stands at a counter, a cutting board in front of her, a knife at 12 o'clock on top of the cutting board. She wears a cutting glove on her left hand and will reach for the potatoes in the pot on her right. So I'm not going to peel them. Um, if you are interested in how a person who is low vision or blind would peel potatoes, um, you can look through our Golden Guide videos. There is one on peeling um, in that library. So what we are going to do, I have my knife at 12 o'clock at the cutting board and that prevents it from knocking off my cutting board. These are smaller potatoes, so you can tell if it's smaller, I would cut these in half. Um, it fits just into the circular part of the palm of my hand. If it was bigger than that, I would quarter it. But because it's not, I'm just gonna half it. You don't wanna cook potatoes whole because the outside um, will cook faster than the inside. And so you'll have mushy, um, potato for the outside and um, hard potato on the inside. So we're going to have them. You wanna make sure that your cuts are, are even. So I'm going to use my thumb on one side and my index finger on the top as my, as my guide where to cut and my middle finger at 12 o'clock. So my thumb and my middle finger are what is actually stabilizing this potato. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna meet my knife to my index finger and I'm just gonna go straight down. Um, and before I started this, I washed these potatoes and so they are nice and clean and I have put them into a pot with water. So now that we have our potatoes all cut into um, halves and in water, uh, the water is about an inch higher than the potatoes. Amy now stands at her stove, the pot of potatoes with water on top. So I have a flat top stove and I know there are many people that think that people who are visually impaired can't use flat top stove, but that is not actually the case. There are a couple different techniques for 
um, dealing with your flat top stove. So the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the fact that this burner has a small one inside the larger one. Now to, to differentiate between the two, um, I only use the larger burner. So I have only marked one side of this knob. So I have um, on the right side of it at about one o'clock I have an H in Braille and then down at the bottom I have an L in Braille. So I know that if I want to do it high I'm going to move the knob to um, the H or low to the L. So the other thing about it I will know when my burner is done because it will click and then it kind of locks you can't wiggle it um, without pushing it in first in order to get it to go. So how is somebody who is low vision or has no vision, how would they be able to tell where the burner is? Well, sometimes the burners have a little texture to them. So you can feel where the outside ring is. So what I would say in that case, Amy places her thumb and index finger on the perimeter of the burner. Put your index finger at 8 o'clock and then your thumb at 6 o'clock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pot and I'm going to place it so my fingers have kind of made an L shape and now I know that I am in the right spot. Another method, um, I have seen people who have had a piece of wood that they cut and it will fit um, into the corner of the stove and then um, they place the pot against it. The other method that I use is I have a braille um, and large print, it's also a tactile ruler. And so I know if I place this at nine o'clock, make sure I got it going the right way. Um, if I place it at nine o'clock, I need to be three inches from the edge of the stove. And then I move it over to six o'clock and I need to be one inch from the edge of the stove. So I know that I am on the center. The final way that you can ensure that you are centered on the burner, and you would do this no matter what type of burner it is, whether it's a flat top or a gas or an electric, is I'm going to, once I turn on my burner, okay, I'm going to put my hand on the handle on either side of my pot. Now when I do this, if I feel heat more on my left hand than I do on my right, I would slide the pot more towards my left. If I feel more on my right than I do my left, I would slide the pot more the other way. Okay, so now we are going to talk about how we know when the pot is boiling. There's three different things that we can do. The first is we're going to look. If you have enough vision, you might be able to see that the water is bubbling. If you don't have enough vision, um, like me, what you can do is you can listen and feel. Okay, so now I can't hear anything. As it comes to a simmer you'll be able to hear light bubbling what we want is we want to get it to a rolling boil and a rolling boil you'll be able to hear that it's bubbling very fast the other way that you will be able to tell if it's boiling is if you hold your hand about six inches above the pot what you will notice is right now, I'm not feeling any sort of humidity coming out of this pot. It's very dry. I can feel the heat, but I can't feel any moisture. Once it starts to boil, if I hold my hand up above it, I'm going to feel the, the steam. Okay, so now we are listening to our potatoes and we can hear that it's simmering. As 
it becomes more of a rolling boil, it will get louder. So now that I have my potatoes at a rolling boil, what we are going to do is we're going to turn the temperature down to medium. The only time that I ever use high is when I'm bringing something to a boil. Otherwise, I cook at medium or low. So what I've done is I've moved my knob to three o'clock. So now I'm at medium. You can cover things. I typically don't because it, it boils over quicker, I think. So I just let it um, boil. And we are going to boil these for about 15 minutes, but I'm going to check them after 12 minutes. What we are going to do is we will remove a potato, put it on a plate, and see if my knife will insert without any resistance. Okay, so now my timer went off, so I'm going to check and see if my potatoes are done. So what I have is a slotted spoon, and I'm gonna dig around inside my pot until I find a potato. I'm tapping my spoon on the edge of my pan to get rid of any excess water. I'm gonna set that aside. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna feel around with my fork for my potato. And I'm going to press my fork into the potato. Now what you will notice is that it went in completely smooth. There was no resistance. What I recommend is if you are initially showing somebody how to tell if your potatoes are done, it's important to time, but it's also important to throughout the process, stop and let them feel how a fork that goes in easily differs from one that is more difficult to press through. Now that my potatoes are boiled, I'm going to take them over to the sink to drain them. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick up with the handles on the side and this is not hot. The handles are not hot. If you have trouble, Amy places the pot in the sink. Feeling like you can move safely over to your sink with the hot pot, what you can do is get a small cart or slide it along a countertop if you have a straight shot from your oven to your sink. Amy removes the cover of so the So now pot. what I have done is because I have the colander on the inside, I have the strainer on the inside of the pot, all I have to do is lift up, let it drain until I can't hear any water dropping. I'm kind of shaking it a little bit just to get rid of the excess water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that pot into the left side of my sink. Then I'm going to, and you might want to use oven mitts for this portion of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the handle of my pan and I'm going to tip out all this water. Maybe pour the water down the drain. So I can mash my potatoes right in my pan. Now, if I were making actual real gravy using a roux and everything, what I would do is I would um, save that potato water and put my potatoes into another container. So now I am going to bring my potatoes in the strainer over and I'm going to bring my pan to the edge of my sink and I'm going to dump into potatoes fall from the colander into the empty pot. My pot. Put my strainer back on the left side and now I'm going to move my pot over to the countertop. Okay, so I have my pot sitting on top of a mat, a heat resistant mat so that it doesn't affect my countertop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my half of a stick of butter and half of a package of cream cheese. And this is fat-free cream cheese, so you'll notice it's a little waterier. But I have cut those into cubes and now I'm going to slide them into my pot. I'm 
tapping my knife on the edge to get rid of any extra. Okay, now I'm going to hold on to the left side of my pan on the handle and I'm gonna use my Pampered Chef Mix and Chop and I'm going to mix everything, the butter and the cream cheese into my potatoes. And as I'm doing this, I am mashing my potatoes. So I'm going in a circular motion starting at 12 o'clock, but I'm also going up and down at the same time. So at each position, I'm going up and then going down. Now what you'll notice is my mix and chop feels heavy now when I pick it up. That's because we have extra potato that has stuck to it. So in between circles, what you need to do is take a spoon or a knife and scrape off that excess potato. And I'm going to keep doing this process with the mixing and the scraping until I feel that my potatoes are mashed. Now, I am mashing these with skins on them, therefore, it's not going to be a 100% smooth um, potato. It is going to be kind of, like I said, a rough mash. If you have any questions or have ideas for other videos that you would like to see, you can contact me at 701-857-7635. Again, 701-857-7635. Or you can email me at a-b-r-u-n-n-e-r at nd.gov. That's a Bruner at nd.gov.